Coming up on iPads in the Classroom, we're using Padlet on the iPad. Hi, my name is Guy Trainin and this is iPads in the Classroom from Tech Edge and today I'm talking about Padlet. Padlet is not a an iPad app, it's really a web app, so it'll work on any of your devices, but I think it's one of those tools that can really help do some things in the classroom, and the great thing about it is it does work cross-platform, so it really does not matter what devices your students have, as long as they have a device, it'll work with laptops, desktops, uh, phones, iPads, Google uh, devices, whatever you may have, and if it can go online, it can go on Padlet. So what do you do in Padlet? Well, this is my uh, page because I got an account. If you're a teacher, please consider getting an account. It's free, but once you have it, everything that you create on Padlet actually gets saved. If not, you can still use it, but it will not get saved. So this is what you do. So I'll go to Padlets I've already created, and you can see that I've got a few of those created over the years. And what you can do with Padlet is really have all of your uh, viewers, whether they're students or peers or collaborators or whatever they may be, they can on log on and contribute to one board or if you create multiple boards in the classroom you can create multiple boards, one for each group and then you can use it that way. So let's look at uh, something that um, I've used just recently uh, in a discussion about rubrics. So. Uh, we had a discussion in class about rubrics. I just created a Padlet really, really quickly. And if you have an account, it's very, very quick. If not, it's still fairly quick. All I did was create a piece of text on top to create categories, advantages and disadvantages. And then everybody else can log in. You can see that there is a web address on top. Anybody that logs into that web address, unless you limit it, can go in and post and you can ask everybody to post with their name or without their name and what you can see is this is a collection of different groups thinking together and then posting and everybody can read it as it gets created. It's a great way to brainstorm, it's a great way to do a KWL chart, it's a lot of things that can happen, can happen inside Padlet and then it's shared with everybody. You can project it like I'm doing right now on a big screen but it doesn't actually have to be projected because every one of the participants, if they have a device, can actually see the board as it is. So how do you create it? Let's create a board. All I have to do is press that plus button Here's a new board, and you can see that it's just a board. If you want to edit that board in any way, you press on Modify Wall, and you can see that I can control the wallpaper. I can change the background, and you see there are multiple choices here, and you can add for your camera. So let's just choose a flower uh, to put there. Uh, you can add those images as well. So you can change the background, but you can also add pictures to it. Um, I can create a title for the board. Let's say we're saying this is a demo, right? So now it says demo. And if I want to make any other changes, I touch the sprocket and I can change. And you can see I can change the wallpaper, right? Well, let's change it to bamboo. And I can change the layout. I can create an actual layout or just let it freeform. I like the freeform, but sometimes if you want more control, grids would help as well. Uh, you can control the privacy options. I like keeping things open. I don't have anything I'm worried about. So I keep it open. Anybody with that address can go in and do it. And you can change. And this is really important because the way Padlet works is it just creates this random link. But you, if you have an account, can create a link that actually makes sense and will be very easy for somebody to spell. So you can change this to say padlet.com slash gtraining, which is my account slash demo. And now to log in, all you have to do is go to padlet.com slash gtraining slash demo. So it's much easier than this random string of letters and numbers makes it worthwhile to get an account just for that feature alone. And now 
we go back to our board and what we can do is the minute I press on my screen, I can put my name and I can write something or I can also attach something so I can paste a URL or a, I can add, I can upload a picture or a file. So there's lots of things you can add to this that would make it richer. It doesn't have to be text. Text is the easiest and it's the thing that if we're doing brainstorming is what people do the most, but it is just as effective and probably richer if we use other media as well. So we can do that through directly through the board. There's no special preparation. You don't have to edit it in any way. You just have to post it that way. So again, the ways you can use Padlet are varied. You can use it for professional development as you collaborate with other teachers or the people actually uh, not in the room with you. You can use it for students in the room working in groups, each working on their own board and then showing their boards to others or you can do just a class-wide uh, brainstorming on Padlet. It's a great tool. It's something that you can use, again, across devices. So even if you have a bring your own or uh, as we like it, uh, everybody's got an iPad. Everybody can participate and contribute to what the class is doing. So today on iPads in the Classroom, we talked about Padlet and I'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom.